Hello everyone, my name is uh, David Sabo. I work at Atari. And um, today I'm going to talk about a long forgot game called Pole Position. <laughs> How many of you remember that game? I grew up on that game. <laughs> Uh, last week in San Francisco, I, I, I went into an arcade and I figured that they have the exact game from 1983 or something like that with the same beeping music. I loved it. Anyway, um, so this was my joke. Uh, no more jokes today. I promise. David uh, from Virgil Security. Um, and uh, today I'd like to talk to you guys about end-to-end -end encryption and how your apps can be HIPAA compliant or GDPR compliant with end-to-end -end encryption. But really what I'd like to do is, if, if, if I successfully do it today, you'll walk out of this room really understanding how end-to-end -end encryption works and, and what is an end-to-end -end encryption key management, and if you decide how you can implement it with open source libraries. Um, we are the tech behind Twilio's uh, encrypted chat. Uh, we do Twilio's mes encrypted messaging and, and Twilio's encrypted chat. And uh, today I'm here to officially announce that Anton encryption is not a fad anymore. Uh, it is here to stay. And if you look around all these chat applications, Skype announced it, uh, I think, three weeks ago that they also switch Anton encrypted. And everybody else in here is already Anton encrypted messaging. So, so Anton encryption is here to stay, and I'd like to explain why. If you look at um, the internet security today, if you look at the standard options that are available for your app, so when you're building a new app, it's typically HTTPS to encrypt data on a wire and at rest to encrypt your data in the database. And if you think about these two ways to encrypt data at transit and at rest, and if you look around, Look across all the use cases, all the things that are happening with your data and your users. It's a joke to only use these two little, short, tiny um, uh, solution portfolio uh, for your app. What an awful phrase. Um, so HTTP at, at rest is really, um, this, this standard internet security really requires you guys as app developers and us too, to ask your customers trust. Because you are only protecting data while it's on the wire or while it's in the database. And anywhere between on the front ends, on the back end servers, uh, it's not protected. And if you look at at rest encryption, it's also a joke. You are encrypting a whole database with one single key that you store next to the database. That's it's like having a million dollar door and keeping the key under the pot uh, kind of thing. So, so it's, it's not really optimal. And, uh, and the problem with this is you have no other option with this standard internet security today than to ask your customers trust. You may ask it or not. They give you their trust because they have no other option. They trust that you're doing the right thing with their data. They trust you that you are not making an accident to breach out their data. And frankly speaking, you have nothing to really back that trust with. You are just hoping that AWS has you know, strong security guards to protect the databases and the wires and all that stuff. But we all just hope that data will not get breached We'll do our best to protect data wherever we can, and that's, that's how far it goes. With end-to-end -end encryption, it's a new phenomena where we don't do all this, but we do that at rest encryption on the device, and we keep the keys on the devices or in the browser or in the cache, and then the data remains encrypted throughout from here to here. So your backend services, your databases won't be able to see the data. If, you, if it happens that you make a mistake or if it happens that AWS gets breached or anything bad happens, it's the encrypted data that will be breached out. Now, with this approach, you don't need to ask trust. You, the trust is in crypto and in the keys. The trust is technically is in math. And it's something that you can calculate versus in here you just hope that data will not be breached here, this key is protected well enough, and the guy who is protecting it is not changing his mind or not leaving his job. Um, so end-to-end -end encryption is, is this whole new world that brings in uh, this whole new world of, whole new breed of apps. For example, this is, uh, this is one of the, um, uh, this is one of the apps that they built with our open source SDK, uh, Cloakroom. This app is the unofficial chat app in Capitol Hill, uh, in the White House and all over the US government in DC. 
uh, they realized that uh, they realized that WhatsApp is is not good because anybody can sign up. Now b they built an end-to-end -end encrypted <laughs> WhatsApp for Capitol Hill and the White House, where only .job, .gov email addresses can sign up, and politicians there chat end-to-end -end encrypted. So imagine this app. End-to-end -end encryption is in the core of its value proposition. Another um, another company that is really um, advanced and ahead of the game is um, Health Cloud in Germany uh, the, from Hassel Plattner Institute. They built this whole healthcare system platform to, pro, uh, to protect German citizens' health data using end-to-end -end encryption. They are building a platform where doctors and patients can collaborate on end-to-end -end encrypted health records and any apps who decide to, uh, to provide services to patients or doctors can access those end-to-end -end protected documents using the patient's and the doctor's keys. How awesome is that? Another example uh, of using end-to-end -end encryption out besides chat, because chat is a really, is a really simple use case, uh, and we use end-to-end -end encryption chat uh, every day. But another use case that is using end-to-end -end encryption is, uh, for example, Sora in the IoT space. This is an intelligent light bulb. Uh, we actually have one at our booth, if you want to uh, come down and check it out, uh, that you put in your ceiling. And this is a mini Alexa. Uh, this has a computer here with a bunch of sensors, and all the sensory data gets end-to-end -end encrypted between this and the bulb, and between the bulb and the cloud. So it's another way of, another way of dealing with the uh, Hey Google or Hey Alexa problem, that your sensory data, your movements, your voice remains end-to-end -end encrypted, and it's built into the device. If you think about, uh, if I think about end-to-end -end encryption and, and and a good example in uh, somewhere else in the world, Docker uh, has been a big breakthrough in Dev DevOps. End-to-end -end encryption is a similar breakthrough in cryptography. You can have your own containers that you protect between users or with a group of people or between a, a two chat partners, cryptographically protect. You can remove the data, you can store it anywhere you want because it's end-to-end -end encrypted. You're not relying on a transport, you're not relying on your cloud provider. You, your app will encrypt it and it remains encrypted forever until somebody else wants to access it. Now, encryption is, <clears throat> is a fairly simple thing to do if you just want to encrypt a piece of blob and decrypt it. Anybody with a weak training can build a ransomware. Uh, it's not guaranteed that you can decrypt it, but the, the difficulty with end-to-end -end encryption is not how you encrypt the data and what you encrypt the data with, but it's how you share that encrypted data with somebody else who has not been there when you encrypted the data. How you invite somebody else into that chat thread, or how you share that document with another group of doctors or with, with your buddies, or how you post something on social media that is encrypted and uh, 100 new people will be able to access it after you encrypted it. That's the hard bit. And um, that's what we call uh, key management, end-to-end -end encrypted key management. How do you make sure that when you encrypt a piece of data on this device, and then you upload that piece of data into your database, encrypted, it remains encrypted throughout the entire journey, and then comes down to this guy's laptop, how do you make sure that the key to decrypt that data is there. That's, that's an end-to-end -end encrypted key management. That's where, how do you synchronize those keys or how do you share that key in a way that is not too silly like emailing the key over. <laughs> we, uh, we, we have come across really fun examples. So, um, and that's exactly what I'm going to explain to you. Um, this is the, the meat, uh, sorry if you're a vegetarian, this is the tofu of my talk. <laughs> uh, uh, the true story of end-to-end -end encryption. And um, so, like everything else, it started with nothing. It was all empty. People were in caves. Brothers and sisters were in caves. There was darkness in the earth. Uh, and, and there was no social interaction between people. They were just uh, cold. And then the creator decided that he would create chat. <laughs> 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 so, uh, 
So yes, he did create chat. Now brothers and sisters could chat with each other, but the creator also realized that, well, I create chat, but how those chat messages will get over from one brother to another or between sisters and brothers and sisters. So that's how he invented the internet with the front end, uh, with the web uh, front end servers, connecting the chat clients on the internet and the database and backend services storing the chat messages. That's how the internet was born in case you didn't uh, know. <laughs> Now brothers and sisters could chat widely with each other and uh, the creator also realized that, wait, hang on, when I'm sending that message over, I, I need to apply some, some level of encryption to it because brothers and sisters are curious by design. Um, so that's when he invented HTTPS. So that data goes over to the web front end and then it terminates. So, the creator realized that there are some brothers and sisters that are not just curious, but more skilled than others. Somehow they showed up on the web front end servers and they looked in the memory and log files and all that stuff and they started decrypting other users' messages. Um, so the creator took a note for himself that this HTTPS thing is, is not good for that whole journey of encrypting. And then the next step, the data went into the database and got encrypted at rest. In, with the database. So there is one database key that encrypts the whole database. So the creator realized that this is suboptimal again. And he also took a note for himself that he needs to solve this problem because that one key needs to be stored next to the database. What's the point, right? Uh, anyway, so he was really tired by the end of the day. Uh, he decided to take a good night's sleep and next day he will fix up this mess. So next day he woke up fresh and then um, he realized that um, there's this thing that he has been thinking all along, end-to-end -end encryption. So end-to-end so -end encryption uh, enables, uh, and with end-to-end -end encryption, the, when brothers and sisters are chatting, they use a key to encrypt the message and that key encrypts the message and goes across the front end servers and goes into the back end servers and databases and it remains encrypted forever. So the creator was really happy. This is a big achievement. Now all the brothers and sisters who are peeking here earlier are really sad to just see white noise or, or red noise. Um, so then the creator also realized that he needs to create the skies because those public keys that encrypt the messages need to be stored somewhere. So if a brother wants to message a sister, if you know anything about private public keys, you need the other person's public key to encrypt that message. And that other person will use his private key to decrypt it. So the skies were created where all the brothers and sisters keys were there for each other to download and encrypt stuff to each other. So this made the creator happy and he took a good night's sleep again. But this is not the end of the story. Next morning he woke up and he saw that brothers and sisters were chatting wildly, but the problem was that they were only chatting in pairs. One brother to one sister or vice versa. And they realized that people are really, uh, really social beings. They wanted to have like three-way chats or four-way chats or big rooms where they can all chat with each other. So, so the creator realized that he needs to be able, he needs to build something now, he needs to create something where this whole chat thread can be shared with a new brother or a new sister. Now, he, he refined the original design by, instead of encrypting with the brothers and sisters keys and decrypting with the brothers and sister keys, one, one to one messages, he decided to create thread keys that encrypt the entire thread. And now he had this awesome idea that if there are three brothers and sisters, uh, sorry, that thread key encrypts the whole th uh, thread. If three brothers and sisters want to chat with each other, wanted to chat with each other, then that thread key will be encrypted between them, not the messages themselves. Make sense? So now, the thread key is encrypted with 
these brothers, three brother keys. And now that's an that's a encrypted key there, in case you didn't notice. And, and that thread key will be decrypted with the user private keys. And now anybody who has been added to that shred thread this way will be able to decrypt the entire thread without re-encrypting every message one by one. So the creator was really happy to see that. And, uh, and, uh, and he decided that this it had, it has got to be the perfect solution. But then came the problem. Some brothers and sisters didn't behave well. And they got, got kicked out of chat threads. Now what happens when a brother who doesn't behave well gets kicked out of a chat thread? He tries to take the key with himself. So he can peek into the chat threads later. And that's what happened. When this dude was kicked, he took the key, took a copy. And then even though the sisters kicked him out, he still had the key somewhere in his pocket. And from time to time, he came back to the servers and decrypted stuff. So the creator realized, oh, humans are not easy. I need to do something about it. So he made it even more difficult uh, for that dude. He created separate keys for every single message. Now, if this brother gets kicked at message number two, all the future keys that will be created just to encrypt those messages, he won't be able to see, right? And that he named perfect forward secrecy. <laughs> so that's, that's the um, end of the story of creation in four days, uh, I think. Um, with that, I'm going to um, call my friend Dennis to show you guys a demo of how this stuff works. On the right, we have a brother. Brother, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> they want to encrypt something to each other. Over to you, though. All right, so let's, let's create the, the sister first, Alice, right? And let's have a private key password for, the, uh, for her key. Alice. Uh, this private key. Right. Here's the. Uh, here's how uh, encryption looks like. And uh, now I'm going to decrypt this data uh, on the Bob side here. <coughs> here we go. You can have any transport you want, and even in any cloud that can store this data. And here's how uh, the code looks like. Uh, here's an encryption just in one line code. Here on this step, stage, uh, we're going to grab the keys from our cloud, just like uh, Virgil Helper get, get card for recipient, right? And uh, that's, that's, that's all. All the encryption stuff uh, performs on uh, client side, so, uh, and that's how it works. Here's an example of how decryption work on also with one key, one, one line of code, yep. And that's all, I guess. So it's a super simple JavaScript browser app and that has no server components at all. It just encrypts, decrypts data between two users. That's how simple it is. So technically, with, without all the error handling and, and the framework code, we are talking about three lines of code for two users to encrypt and to encrypt a piece of data to each other and decrypt it. Here's the key generation. I'm using our uh, crypto library. And uh, you, of course, can decide what kind of key do you want to use in this particular, particular use case. And, and here's the, as I said, uh, encryption and decryption as well. So. Cool. Cool. You, Any questions right, right now on the code? <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you.